In neighboring China, a civil war had been going on for years between the communist Chinese and Washington's allies, the nationalist Chinese. There had been a lull of sorts during the war against Japan, but now the communists were positioned to take it all. For those of us who'd had any experience in China knew that uh, we could remobilize several million men and do nothing more than occupy a few coastal cities in China. There's no way that we can lay on a general war to stop communism or for any other purpose on the Chinese mainland. Washington sent a number of soldier diplomats to China to see what could be done. General Albert Wiedemeyer was one of them. At all times, it was impressed upon me that uh, communism would be blocked uh, uh, in every way possible uh, without creating a uh, scene where military force would be necessary. The idea was to create a coalition government, convince President Chiang Kai-shek to share power with the communists. I said, uh, General Marshall, I don't believe you can uh, uh, amalgamate these forces with the communists and the nationalists. Former Congressman Walter Judd remembers a conversation with Chiang Kai-shek. He said, uh, why does your government have opposite policies with respect to our government from that which it has in Europe? Uh, you say that the countries over there, you must keep the communists out of your government. The whole Greek-Turkey program was based on the Greeks who are, you must keep communists out. Uh, and then you come to my and tell me that you won't give our government unless we take the communists in. But more to the point, Mao Zedong and his communist armies didn't need to share power. In October of 1949, they achieved total victory. In their moment of triumph, they asked for recognition from the United States. The message was carried by a junior diplomat, Han Shu, now Chinese ambassador to the United States. After the proclamation uh, of uh, the founding of the People's Republic of China, uh, on October 1st, 1949, I personally brought to Mr. Edmund Club, uh, then the U United States uh, Council General in Beijing, an announcement made by the Chinese government asking for recognition. But there was no response from the United States uh, side. One may say that very possibly we missed a political opportunity to uh, establish a primary contact with uh, Zhou Enlai uh, that might have been more fruitful later. A year later, Chinese and American troops would be fighting one another in Korea. The Asiatic crisis point becomes Korea. On June 25, 1950, North Korean troops crossed the 38th parallel. Within two days, they were on the outskirts of the South Korean capital, Seoul. In uh, evacuating the city of Seoul, I had taken out a shortwave radio with me, and uh, the boys were operating that evening after I went to bed. And among other things, uh, they were able to pick up the uh, broadcast of uh, President Truman's statement that uh, he had decided to uh, uh, put uh, American air and naval forces into action. Truman had done more than simply order troops into action. This wasn't going to be an American war. This would be a police action by the forces of the United Nations against communist aggression. It happened that the Soviets were boycotting the UN Security Council and so were not around. Brian Urquhart has been with the United Nations Secretariat for more than 30 years. In that particular case, the United Nations in the absence of the Soviet Union, took a decision which was, in fact, the policy of the United States. Certainly, well, I don't think that will ever happen again. An American president had effectively gone to war without congressional approval. That would happen again. President Truman appointed General Douglas MacArthur commander of the United Nations forces. MacArthur succeeded brilliantly, pushing all the way to the Chinese border. He wanted to go on. The Chinese were watching closely. Hundreds of thousands of troops were ready to strike. Liang Quan Shui was one of them. Every day in Chengdu, there were discussions. The topic was American imperialism, was just a paper tiger, and it was nothing, powerless. Zhang Hongjin, a doctor, volunteered to join the Chinese army. They said the Americans had already come to the Yellow River. They had crossed the Yellow River, they would be close to Atomen. 
and come into our territory, into China. So they told us to go and help Korea. We received um, a kind of warning through the Indian ambassador. If uh, the United States is going to, uh, to cross the uh, Soviet parallel and expand the war, and the China will not sit back and uh, with folded, with folded hand, hands. But the, the United States government ignored the, the warning. At Wake Island, General MacArthur told President Truman that he did not think the Chinese would intervene, but that if they did, there would be a mass slaughter at the Yalu River, that it wouldn't make much military difference even if they did. Well, in, on both counts, we were wrong. The Chinese, just as they had warned, streamed across the border, pushing the Americans back. American troops were caught off guard by the massive Chinese attack. Casualties among Marines who at one point were surrounded were extremely heavy. Finding himself overwhelmed, MacArthur stepped up his demand that the U.S. open a general war against China, even to the point of using nuclear weapons. Harry Truman recognized a reality that would haunt every American president to come. There were limits, even to U.S. power. MacArthur was adamant, taking his case directly to the American public. Truman fired him. It was not a popular move. MacArthur returned to a hero's welcome. Cheering crowds reflected the American appetite for clear victory. That there were limitations to what a superpower with an atomic arsenal could do was too frustrating. Without a war against China, a traditional victory in Korea was impossible. And if you couldn't fight to win against the communists, how would it ever end? What America had determined by now was that it wasn't going to return to isolationism. By 1952, we were in Europe, we were in Asia, and we were going to stay. Indeed, during the next eight years, the Eisenhower administration would lead the battle to resist international communism. In a moment, Peter Jennings will return with that. Forty-five, eighty-five, America and the world since World War II.